The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Mike Francesa might have taken the lead for the most absurd thing anyone could say about the Jets this offseason. Wait till you hear what the sports pope had to say about Joe Douglas and the NFL draft. We'll talk about that and much more. It's the Jake Asman Show. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jet. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go. Jet fans, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks to everyone who tuned into the shows yesterday, especially the one we did with the Buffalo Jet fan talking about the Buffalo Bills trading away Stefan Diggs and what it means for the rest of the AFC East and specifically what it means for the New York Jets. In today's show, I want to play you some commentary made by Mike Francesa, the sports pope, on his podcast. So Mike was discussing the Jets options with the number 10 pick in the draft. And Mike seems to think that offensive tackle Joe Alt from Notre Dame might actually be on the board at number 10 for the Jets. So this was Mike telling you exactly what he thinks the Jets should do with that number 10 pick. He's probably going to be there for the Jets. If the Jets get the good fortune of Alt being there at 10, if they don't take him, they should be shot. And if Alt's there, pop the champagne, pop the champagne corks, because that will be a home run. That will be a guy who will be a 10-year starter, maybe a Maybe a 14-year starter, a multiple-time All-Pro. He is a can't-miss player on the offensive line. Can't miss. Right pedigree, right everything. A six-foot-seven sec- uh, six tackle. Like I said, it's 50 50 is there. Wait a second, Mike. If Joe Douglas doesn't take Joe Alton, he's there. He should be shot. Folks, we have a new leader in the clubhouse. For the most absurd draft demand or draft commentary you could give about the New York Jets. Francesca says the Jets should be shot if they pass on Joe Alt. But at the beginning of the clip, Listen to what he says about Alt being there at 10. He's probably going to be there for the Jets. If the Jets get the good fortune of Alt being there at 10, if they don't take him, they should be shot. But then at the end of the clip, he says it's 50-50, he'll be there. So what is it, Mike? Is it 50-50 or he's probably going to be there? Because probably would be higher than... 50%. But let's focus in on the they should be shot part. What? If the Jets get the good fortune of Alt being there at 10, if they don't take him, they should be shot. If they don't take him, they should be shot. They should be shot. You talk about pressure on Joe Douglas. Mike Francesa is not calling for Joe Douglas to be fired. 
if they pass on Joe Alt. He's saying they should be shot. They should be shot. I mean, wow. They should be shot. I mean, I've heard of strong takes, but you talk about death. They should be shot. I mean, I, I wouldn't even go that far, right? I mean, we Jet fans, we wouldn't even say that about Zach Wilson. But Mike is saying if the Jets pass at Joe Alt, someone should be shot. They should be shot. I don't know about that one, Mike. Now, let me say this. If Joe Alt is there at 10 and the Jets took him, I would be pumped up. I'd be ecstatic. I don't think Joe Alt's making it to 10. Where's this notion that it's going to happen, that he's going to be there? As Mike says at the beginning of the clip, he's probably going to be there. But then by the end of the clip, it's only 50%. Are we sure even 50%? If Joe Alt's as good as Mike Francesa says he, he is. should be shot. Then there's no way he's making it to 10. You don't think Tennessee would take him at 7? Tennessee, a team that desperately needs offensive line help. You don't think that we wouldn't see the Chargers potentially take all at 5? We know Harbaugh loves his Big fat guys up front wants to run the ball even without their receivers. Do you don't think any team would maybe try and move up? Get to eight with Atlanta to get Alt if he's that good? The idea that Alt, if he's as good as Mike says he is, would make it to 10. Come on. They should be shot. But when we start talking about people being shot, I mean, damn. <laughs> uh, I love it, man. I wish we could get Sal on the show right now, right? You know, last week he's at the owners' meetings. He's speaking about how everyone wants him fired, and he said this. When you lose, you're a loser. I suck. Joe D sucks. We all suck. But now we're talking about this. He should be shot. So we, we have reached a new level of <laughs> sports discourse here, man. Here's what would concern me about all. Mike Francesa's track record when it comes to anointing draft prospects, not great. Anyone who follows the excellent Twitter account back after this knows exactly what I'm talking about. Mike Francesa led his show. I'll never forget this because I was working at FAN at the time. He led his show the day after Sam Darnold had his debut game against the Lions on Monday Night Football. And after throwing the pick six on his first pass, he then played well that night. And the Jets won that game in blowout fashion. It was a great win, a great moment in the bleak last, you know, 13-year tenure of the Jets. That was a great moment that night. And Francesa comes on the air the next day and says, there's going to be a day where Sam Darnold's going to rule this town. He will be the biggest sports star in the city. And we know how that worked. So when I hear Francesa talking about Joe Alt here, I'm concerned. Mike Francesa and Alan Avital, Joe Alt truthers. But let me say this. While the sports pope has spoken, there's other good offensive linemen in this class. And you can't sit here and tell me that Alt is definitely the best one. We don't know. How do we know? A couple of years ago, Evan Neal and Ike Aquano were thought to be can't miss tackles. Remember? I mean, you can't be a can't miss tackle and go in the top seven like those guys did. There are people who wanted the Jets to take those players at four. Thank God Joe Douglas took Sauce Gardner instead. But let me tell you something. There's other good offensive linemen in this class, and it's why I think. The Jets' best strategy is still to attempt a trade back if they're going to go offensive line. Now, I don't know how the Jets feel about all the offensive linemen, but I do know Joe Douglas was gushing last week about this offensive line class. I mean, if you remember, Joe Douglas said the Jets have options in the draft. 
But when he was asked to break down the draft, look what he said about the offensive line. Well, I think um, this, this is an unbelievable line class. It's an unbelievable uh, class at, a, at quite a few positions. But I think uh, where we're at now, we have great flexibility um, to go in any direction that, that we see uh, is best for us moving forward. So um, I think it, it, it opens, door, opens the door to a lot of possibilities at 10. I mean, at the beginning there, I think Douglas catches himself because at first you heard him say, you know, it's an unbelievable O-line class. And then he quickly realizes, well, let me say good things about other positions too. Watch it again. Well, I think um, this, this is an unbelievable O-line class. It's an unbelievable uh, class at, a, at quite a few positions. But I think. So if it's an unbelievable O-line class, that means there's more than just Joe All. How do we know, by the way, that. Joe Douglas doesn't love J.C. Latham as his top offensive lineman or Troy Fontano, who the Jets have met with. How do we know? It's why I still think if they could trade back, that should be the approach. Now, if they love someone at 10, you take the guy at 10. That's fine. No issue. But to me, the approach still should be trading back. And seeing if you get an extra pick. Because if you're going to go offensive line at 10, I think there's a good chance that if you could trade back, you're still getting a really good offensive lineman in that scenario. But the Jets are going to have grades on these guys. And if they have conviction on one of the players they want to take, fine, take the player. But I'm telling you, to me, if you could get an extra pick and still you're going offensive line anyway, how does that not make the most sense if, even if we're talking about an extra third round pick, because then you have two third round picks. If you want to get back in the second round to get one of these receivers, well, you have two third round picks and two fourth round picks. You have the draft capital required to make a trade to get into round two and still give yourself an opportunity to have maybe an extra third and extra fourth. Because if you want to get back into the second round, you package one of your thirds, one of your fourths. That might be enough to get back into the end of round two. And you still would have a third. You still would have a fourth. So, it, it, like, whoever they take a 10, that guy's got to be an unbelievable player, even if it's an offensive lineman and that player doesn't end up playing right away. Because from a value standpoint, you can't tell me that getting something back in a trade down in a draft that's loaded at positions you need wouldn't make more sense. Now, there's also the trade-up scenario. If you tell me Roma Dunze is your guy and somehow he makes it to eight, and you flip a fourth to go up and get him, I'm fine with that too. I really, look, it, it, I can't sit here and complain if they took a tackle at 10. I will complain if they took Bowers at 10. If they took a Dunze at 10, I obviously wouldn't complain. But I almost would rather see the Jets trade up or trade back rather than stay put. Now, the exceptions are, why well, I wouldn't go as far as Mike Francesa, and say that Joe Douglas should be shot if he passes. They should be shot. On Joe Alt. I would say, yes, if Alt somehow, by the grace of God, is there at 10, you take him. If Olu Fashano is there at 10 and the Jets took him, I'd have no problem with that. But I think if it's up to me, I'm either trading up to get a Dunze or maybe Marvin Harrison or neighbors, if that somehow is even possible, depending on what it costs to give up. I would trade next year's two. I would do the Jeremiah proposal. I think it's going to cost more than that, which is why I'm reluctant to fully believe. But I will agree with Mike from this standpoint. He should be shot. I don't agree with that. But I do agree that if Alt is there at 10, the Jets should definitely take him, and I'd have, I would have no problem with that whatsoever. So, Jet fans, I ask you this question. Should someone be shot if they pass on Joe Alt? I'm just kidding. Appreciate everyone who's tuned in this morning. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. I'm rocking a Huga House hat this morning on the show. If you want this hat or other houses that or other houses. I wish I had a house. Instead, I have a New York City apartment that costs way more than Houston. If you want a vintage-inspired hat, 15% off, then you have to use my promo code ASMIN at checkout, and you can get the same hat that I'm wearing or that Aaron Rodgers is wearing, or that Shane Gillis, who's probably the best stand-up comic going right now, is rocking. Check it out. HugaHouse.com, promo code ASMIN to get that discount. Reminder to join the Patreon if you haven't. Bonus shows are available every single month. 
early release on shows. We put up four shows before the general public got them last week when I was taping shows in advance due to my move. You also get your name in the countdown. We update that list every month. And, of course, get the show on Apple or Spotify. And the best perk of all, Discord access. So you're notified when we go live. And the Jet conversation continues there all throughout the day. Appreciate everyone for their support. And thank you guys, as always, for tuning into the show live or after the fact. Ryan starts us off with a comment here. He says, draft an offensive tackle in the first round and put Smith on a pitch count and have a rookie play opposite snaps and try to keep him healthy for when we need him for our playoff run. Look, they got to be very careful with Tyron Smith, Ryan, but you're not going to put him on a pitch count in games. You're probably just going to limit his practice reps in practice. And in training camp, you're going to take it easy on him. See, Mike McCarthy had a great quote to Rich Cimini at the owners' meetings last week that the plan they had for Smith this past year was the best plan they came up with since McCarthy had been the Cowboys coach. And basically, according to Rich, the plan entailed by the second half of the year, Tyron Smith wouldn't participate in any live drills at practice. But he'd go out there and play on Sundays or Mondays or Thursdays. And that's all that matters. If he played 13 games last year, if I tell the Jet fan right now, would you sign for 13 games of Tyron Smith and piece together the other four with a combination of maybe a draft pick, Carter Warren, et cetera, you wouldn't sign for that? I think, of course, you would. Super chat from King and Dreams. What's popping, Jake, my G? Big up to the chat. Jet up. King, I hope your flight to Columbia was successful. Matthew with a super chat. He cuts the line. Jake, this offseason must have you taking DJHE, DJHE, Canadian Aspen for energy, like the way Chris Berman does slash did. How do you pronounce that? Uh, this offseason has been fun, Matthew. I, I'm proud to say that despite the Henny intake yesterday celebrating the hopeful demise of the Bills, I was A-OK. -okay. I feel alive this morning. Maybe because I couldn't stop laughing when I saw Mike Francesa say this with a straight face. Get the good fortune of all being there at 10. If they don't take them, they should be shot. If they don't take them, they should be shot. They should be shot. You heard the man. I won't go that far, Mike, but I like Joe all too. Man. Super chat from KS. Trade back, find a way to draft Xavier Worthy. Yeah, look, I, I'm intrigued by the speed, obviously. How could you not? I don't know if the Jets will go down that path. In a trade back, though, a receiver in round one's in play, and then you hope if they're trading back that far to get Worthy, you know what they could do? They could take an offensive lineman in round two, potentially. Maybe it's Patrick Paul, for example. Omar writes in. Good morning from the Bay, Jake. Let's go Jets. Let's go get a Dunze. We have to get in front of the Bears. Yeah, look, I don't know for sure if the Bears are definitely taking a weapon. Maybe they are. They're mocked a lot to our Dunze. To be safe, I agree, Omar. You have to get to eight if you want a Dunze, assuming he's there. Now, there is a chance a Dunze is not there, by the way, folks. There's a very good chance here's what happens. Harrison goes four to the Cardinals. The Chargers, even though Jim Harbaugh could pretend like he wants to go O-line, 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 could be a smokescreen. Maybe no one's coming up for one of the quarterbacks. And let's say Neighbors goes there at five, and then Adunze goes six to the Giants. We, we could have receivers go four, five, and six. I know there's all this hype with quarterbacks, but a lot of times hype is hype. A year ago, Will Levis was a top 10 pick. He fell to the second round. So it does feel like McCarthy's going to go in the top 10. But we don't know for sure. There is a scenario where all three of the receivers are gone by the time the Bears are even on the clock at nine. Also, the Falcons, while I don't think they would necessarily take a receiver there, what if a team knows the Jets might take a receiver and they want to get in front of the Jets or the Bears and they're making the trade up? I don't know if Buffalo is going to trade all the way up into the top 10 now to try and replace Diggs, but it's at least on the table, right? So... I think a lot of this, you know, just take a dunes if he's there at 10. I think I think there's a chance you have to trade up for him. Now, if it goes quarterback, 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 one through four, 
then I think it's likely that, yeah, maybe Adunze, if he is the perceived third receiver in the big three, maybe he is there at at eight and you call Atlanta, make a deal. But I think there's a lot of factors here we don't know. King and Dreams writes in with a super chat. I'm in Miami. I'm about to board now. Craziness. Good luck, my man. Safe flight. Not Michael Nania writes in. Thanks for clarifying you're not Nania. Jake, I can't believe you disagree with Mike. We need better tackle depth and a plan for the future. We could solve both with pick 10. I didn't say I disagree with him. I said I don't think Joe Douglas should be they shot. Should be shot. If, in fact, they don't uh, take Joe Alt. I think the idea that Alt's the only good offensive lineman in this class is what I push back they on. should be shot. I wouldn't go that far, Mike. And look, I... I'm a Francesa fan. I want to make it clear, all right? I used to work at the fan. I grew up listening to Mike and the Mad Dog. I met uh, Francesa with Russo at a Barrett Sports Media event two years ago. Obviously, I work for Chris's station, Mad Dog Sports Radio. So I am a Mike and the Mad Dog guy. I want to make that clear, even though I also grew up listening to the Michael K. Show every day. But I just think when we're talking about someone being shot, I think, you know. You should be shot. Eh, maybe we went a little too far there. That's all I'm trying to say. All right. I mean, is that Mike Francesa or Neil threatening to shoot Zach Wilson last year? Or Belichick, I think it was. <laughs> Big fella says, Troy Fontano. Look, if Fontano is there, I have no problem with him at 10 either, to be honest with you. He can play guard and tackle. He's got championship pedigree. I'm in. Plus, Big Fella says he's gifting 50 Asmaniac memberships. 50. All right. 5 0. If the Jets select Fontano. And look, I love doing this show, but memberships, super chats, that's how we, I, that's how I, I, I put bread on the table. So if you tell me 50 memberships are coming in for the Jets to one, get an excellent player, two, get an excellent player that could play two different positions of need, and three, Big fella is going to drop 250 on this channel. I'm in. Matias says, take the offensive tackle, please. I'm in. Papa says, thanks for the morning shows, Jake. I miss good morning football. You help fill the void. Thank you, Papa. Appreciate that. We try to space out our two shows a day during the week, right? A morning show, an afternoon show, ideally, unless there's breaking news or my schedule is at a wonk. But typically, Monday through Friday, for those who are the show, we'll do a morning stream, an afternoon stream, and then on the weekends, either a Saturday or a Sunday show, or sometimes both, depending on what the news cycle calls for. Tom says, that's how I put Chipotle on the table. You're right, Tom. Tom, how come you're not an Asmaniac? I'm shocked. You're one of the most uh, frequent commenters. YouTube's got to get that algorithm right. GTA says, Plaxico Burris has entered the chat. <laughs> well done. Well done. Shout out to Jigga Man. He's watching the show. What's up, Jigga? Let's go Knicks tonight. Alan says, love that take. Equals sports pope. Oh, we know you love Joe Alt, Alan. Believe me. We know that, you know, you want to whisper sweet nothings into a Joe Alt's ear. We know, man. We know. <laughs> At the beach laughing my ass off. <laughs> all I have to say is lose out. Clean fucking house and draft Joe Alt. Merry Christmas to all the solid truthers. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, Alan. Big fella, gifted one membership. Whoa, baby, it starts. I don't have the handy for you, big fella. It's too early for that. But I'll give you a I'll give you a Poland spring ch chug here. I also will shout out who received an Asmaniac membership. And the person that received it was Dakota Jones, courtesy of the big fella. So congratulations. Judging. Um, Boomtown says, Jake, I had to bite the bullet and just do it myself. I love it, Boomtown. Thanks for the support. Luppy says, Mike also said Sam Darnold would be a good quarterback. Look, I'm not going to kill Mike for that take. I thought that as well. But I will say, though, I brought this up earlier, Luffy. I'm guessing you just tuned in. 
I'll never forget it. The day after Darnold won his first start against the Lions, he does a whole monologue about how Sam Darnold will rule the town and be one of the biggest sports stars in the history of New York. We know how that worked. So I'm a little worried when he talks about Joe Alt like he's the second coming of, you know, DeBrickishaw Ferguson. First State Jets writes in, it's simple. Left tackle attends insurance for 2024 and a starter for five years. It's not complicated. Benefits is now and in the future. It's a no-brainer. Well, the other thing, too, with the offensive line argument, right, there's a lot of Jet fans who love Joe Douglas and want to whisper sweet nothings into his ear, despite the fact he's been here now for five full seasons and they haven't had a winning record yet. So if you believe in Joe Douglas, then shouldn't he – be making a pick uh, a pick that could help the Jets now and in the future, which, by the way, that would be an offensive lineman because that guy's going to start for you next year when Tyron Smith and Morgan Moses' deals are up. I don't know. They're both coming back. Oh, no. King and Dream says it got delayed again. Good luck, my man. Well, you know what? Start drinking, man. There's no rules at an airport. It's 5 o'clock somewhere, everywhere when you're at an airport, especially when your flight's delayed. Kyle Clifton says, I didn't even know shooting team personnel was an option. Me neither. I had no idea. You should be shot. <laughs> uh, Henry Confidential says, I want Latham as an Alabama fan. I have the utmost faith he could flip to the left side, especially with Tyron Smith there to mentor him. You're not alone on Latham. Joe Blewett really likes Latham. We're going to try and get Joe on the show. I want to get his breakdown on Latham because he he's high on him. I think he has him as his best tackle. Also, Lance Erline from NFL.com, NFL Network, and I know Lance personally. He was the morning show host on ESPN Houston. Still is. I used to be the afternoon host on ESPN Houston. And, you know, Lance, I got to know pretty well. His dad was an offensive line coach in the league. Lance is super, super educated when it comes to line play. He has Latham as his number one guy. He told me that on my Mad Dog show when I had Lance on as a guest uh, last month. So I say all that to say that the consensus on the top offensive lineman is all over the place. Let's not forget, a couple of years ago, the Jets in 2020, they had two options on the offensive line, Beckton or Wirfs. They picked the wrong player. Andrew Thomas did not have a great rookie year with the Giants. Now he's an all-pro tackle. So, like, it takes time sometimes with offensive linemen, too which is more reason to take one now so that guy, in theory, could sit behind Tyron Smith and learn, sit behind Morgan Moses and learn and not have to play right away. And then they're starting for you next year, but this year they're not thrusted in right away. I think Joe Tipman had success right away because the Jets didn't play him week one or week two, right? It, it took until you had a couple injuries for the Jets to make the switch where they put Tipman in the starting lineup at guard, right? Dwayne Brown got hurt. Beckton moved over to left tackle. AVT played right tackle. And then Tippman played right guard. And he played well there. So I, I think that's another argument for team offensive line ogre. Shake and Bake says, did you get that breakfast sandwich when you moved to New York? Oh, damn right I did. You kidding? Mike writes in, I'm one of those JD truthers. I just look at the roster before he took over and how it's built now. He built the championship roster. Yeah, but he missed on quarterback. And yes, he got Rodgers. I agree, but Rodgers, I mean, look, I love the guy. I do. I, I'm a believer in him, but we only have him for a couple of years. He's 40. He's coming off this injury now. You know, D Douglas has done to me more good than bad. It's a complicated resume because of how bad the Zach Wilson pick played out. But there's no doubt he's done some good things. But, Mike, I'd say to you this. If he was in charge of hiring the head coach, a lot of people, including my fiery debate with Peter Castro yesterday, think Salah is Mussolini, think he's terrible. He's not, but you get the point. He hired him. The best thing I could say about Salah is it's incomplete. I think he has some qualities that certainly you could point to that are good for a head coach, and there's some things that concern me. I'm not going to lie. The penalties, the poor starts. The lackadaisical, just kind of stoic persona on the sideline towards the end of the year. You know, the beatdown that Miami handed to them. It just felt like they got outcoached after that big win against the Texans. There's some things with Salah that concern you. Now, I think he deserves a year with Rodgers and Tyrod backing up Rodgers and not Zach Wilson or Tim Boyle. 
but Douglas hired him. So I, I just I get frustrated with the you know nonstop praise of Joe Douglas when this team's missed the playoffs the last two years because of quarterback play. Sal has done his job as far as building up the defense, changing the culture, guys playing hard. If they had better quarterback play, they win three more games each of the last two years easily, and they're in the playoffs. So I think Joe Douglas and Robert Sala are attached together until otherwise. Shake and Bake says, are there any mid-round quarterbacks you really want? I'm going to save this question, Shake and Bake, because I'm doing a film review at 3 p.m. Eastern today with Andrew Fialco, and we're going over mid-round quarterback options for the Jets. So tune into that. We're going to break down one of the top guys that's been linked to the Jets and talk about some of the other options as well. Luppy says, the only way we shoot JD is if we come out of the draft without one or more offensive linemen. They should be shot. I don't think anyone's shooting JD. Super chat from JR Jet. Jake, you have a laugh track now. Show has truly evolved. By the way, how do you get memberships? I've been trying to do it. So when you go over to Super Chat, hit the gift memberships button. It's there. It's right where you got the Super Chat option. Also, we do, in fact, have a laugh track. <laughs> I figured it was time to get some drops on this show. I'm a radio guy. I got the face for radio. I talk like I'm on the radio. This show just happens to be on camera. Peter says, Mike is full of himself. He hates the Jets. Well, Peter, I don't think Mike hates the Jets as much as much as you hate Robert Sala. I'll tell you that much. All right? I suck. Uh, I'll tell you that for sure. I suck. You hate him. Hate him. No, he sucks. I suck. I mean, I'm just going to keep hitting the I suck drop for you, Peter. I know this makes you happy. I suck. I suck. I suck. It's bringing smiles down Peter's face. Ryan Condor has got a super chat for us. He cuts our line here. Eight hours, bro. Rodgers hasn't thrown one touchdown to a first-round pick ever. Mercedes Lewis in 2019. Rodgers doesn't need first-round picks if he has time to throw. Rodgers needs protection. He also, I still think, needs another weapon. Now, I think they could get by with what they have. I'd like to see them address wide receiver in the draft if they're going to go offensive line in the first round. I'd like to see a receiver with pick 72 in round three or if they trade back with that extra second or third round pick, one of them should be a receiver. I also think the Jets could still add a veteran receiver. Tyler Boyd is available. He's not signing with the Steelers. Can the Jets swoop in and allow him the ring chase? Something to potentially watch. Super chat from the big fella. Reviewing Milton at 3 p.m. so we can stop this madness. He is not the quarterback we're doing on tape today. He might be in the future, though, big fella. And then I'm going to put you and Gary on the screen at the same time so you can argue about Joe Milton. Get the people what they want. Open phone lines on the Gus Buster umbrella hotline. Folks, I come back to New York. All it does is rain. It's truly unbelievable. If you go to GusBuster.com, you could purchase the best umbrella in the universe. And you can use the promo code Jake to so get 15% off on any of your umbrellas. Check it out, folks. GusBuster.com. Use that promo code Jake and get yourself an umbrella that is guaranteed to protect you during April showers. Dad, Life FC, up next on the show. What's up, Dad? What's up, Jake? Thank you for giving me the opportunity, man. Quick question. I was listening to Boy Green this morning, and he brought up something about possible the Bills jumping in front of the Jets to get on a, a wide receiver. And I'm thinking Atlanta need a defensive player. It might be crazy, but what if we trade our one of our fourth and McDonald? to the Falcons to get their pick and a second. I know it's kind of early to get off McDonald, but if we give Reddick along like a three-year deal, I think for a win now, if we can get Atlanta pick and their second and we give them Will McDonald and one of like our third or fourth round pick, you think that will work? I don't think Atlanta will do that. I think they'd rather just take Dallas Turner, who their front office had been scouting, 
doing the work on and would take her, Jared Burst. You know what I mean? Like, a, a, unless okay. we find out, well, they had a first round grade on McDonald and they loved what they saw last year in his limited reps. I don't see Atlanta doing that. Plus, it's another year removed on McDonald's rookie contract. Rookie contract. So, like, yeah. why wouldn't they just take the guy they've done all the work on at eight rather than do that? I think if you're the Jets and you want to get to eight, you call Atlanta and you say, hey, we'll give you one of our fourth round picks and we'll give you a third round pick next year if it takes that. I, I don't think it will cost as much as people think to only move up two spots because it's a non-quarterback we're talking about. And Atlanta is still getting the player they're likely targeting in Dallas Turner or Jared Burst at 10 anyway. So I think if you flip a fourth this year and maybe a fifth next year, that's enough to move up two spots and get a Dunze. Yeah, but the thing is, I just don't, if Buff, maybe Buffalo might be thinking the same way. I'll just forget some maybe we'll sweeten the pot to get ahead of them. But think about it, they don't they don't they will have use in second round picks that a conditional pick or it's a pick they have so they can use it in this year's draft. The one they got from Houston. Yeah, but all but but also here's the other thing too, like the 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 Bills would have to give up way, way more for like an unproven oh, sure thing. Like they, they, we're talking about like picks this year. The uh, two they acquired from Houston next year, their first next year, like they're picking twenty eighth right now, Dad. So oh, like, oh yeah, 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 that's true. That's like, true. And also, if the Jets made that move, you then need another edge rusher. Like that was the whole point why they brought in Reddick because like they wanted to replace Huff. They want to they want to have a staple of edge rushers. They they want to carry more, not less, at that position. Well, I think they're going to re-sign Reddick. Um, I would at least for a couple of years. And offensive lineman, no Brock Bar- Bars. Um, I'm, I don't want a tight end. I like Conklin, and um, I feel like if we we should go offensive lineman because I feel like I could be wrong. During the regular season, it may be easier to trade for a wide receiver versus a, again a solid offensive um tackle. So I feel like offensive tackle all day, every day in the draft, and we can worry about weapons later because we got a rock, we got the best. So I'm not worried about wide receiver. So appreciate it, offensive tackle all day, and thank you, man. Enjoy. I appreciate you. Thanks, Dad. Good call. It feels weird calling him Dad, but that's his name. Dad Life FC. <laughs> also, wherever he's calling us from, I am jealous. Comment where you're calling us from, Dad. I mean, that is that is a tremendous, tremendous sunshine right now that I'm jealous. The big fella says that custom Jets Gus Buster was fire. Yeah, for those who are in our Discord, my brother and I got dinner last night, and my dad years ago made him a custom Gus Buster. But it's not for sale because, you know, it's not like we have the rights for that. But I am going to have them make a Jake Asman show, Ghostbuster. Maybe we'll sell those. That'd be cool. Wow, big time super chat from NYJ Maddie. When you give something this significant, we don't just give you a sounder. We give you a video, baby. Hit it, Tom Cruise. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Hey, yo. And why Jay Maddie says, who are you looking forward to interview at Detroit draft? Also, since you settled in at home and joined cats on me, I appreciate you. And why Jay Maddie big time, super chat, 50 bucks. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Means a lot. I definitely will take you up on that. That cat sandwich, man. Oh, I can't wait. I haven't, I haven't been down to cats in a while, but I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and look, as far as the Detroit draft goes, I'm going to be in Vegas for the draft at Circa, right? But I could tell you, that we will have a lot of prominent draft content that week leading up to the draft featuring big name analysts joining us. And during our mega cast, we're going to get some big time names set to join the show. So I'm putting the draft show together. And I'm also excited to announce that the great Gator McCluskey is going to be joining me in Las Vegas. He's going to be my on-site producer for all three days. So Gator and I are going to come up with some technical advancements to make the mega cast look as cool as possible. You know, Gator with his studio set up and different crazy stuff he could do. So I thought it was important to get him out there to make this draft mega cast as cool as possible. NYJ. So it's going to be awesome. And I can't wait. Cannot wait to be out there. So we got the great Gator McCluskey coming through to Vegas, which is dangerous folks. For those who were in the, at the last Vegas trip at Circa, you know how Gator could be. I'll be, I'll be watching over him. Tom says Jake Asman in 3D for the Mega Cast. <laughs> Imagine we still have 3D glasses for 3D of our Mega Cast. Oh my God. I don't know if I could handle, you know, a V Man call in 3D though, Tom. I don't know about that one. 
Get back to your calls in a moment. The Super Chat is from Coops, who writes in, Rodgers needs protection. Completely agree. Please, please, J.D., pick up an offensive tackle. We need depth there, more so than receiver. There's still veteran talent out there. Rodgers will be able to elevate receivers. No question. I would like another receiver, though, too. But I think you could get that in the draft on day two. I also think as long as Tyler Boyd is still out there and Odell is still out there, why wouldn't the Jets consider adding another receiver? Why wouldn't they? Also, our last caller, Dad Life FC, is in Florida. He was at the park with his daughter. Love that. Love that. Thanks for the super chat, Coops. Let's get back to the calls right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Mr. Bonesy is up next. Hello, Bones. Hey. What's up, buddy? How we doing? Just uh, getting my kids ready. We had a uh, two-hour delay. So, you know, just living that dad life when I'm home from work. Um, I'm, I'm getting a little jealous of all this Vegas talk. Well... We were able to convince uh, your wife to let you out last time. I mean, do we have to do some uh, some some talking in the in the? Yeah, uh, but I had the, the game as a boy, you know, and I had you. I was going. I was like, oh man, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> go with my homie, go to the game, <laughs> you know. But you know, I uh, I'm gonna need mirror. I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be, I'll be tuned in, but the FOMO. Save the ass for, for you know, the regular season when we do another trip. Like, I might need to get you to the U.K. this year, Bonesy, if the Jets are in London. So, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll save the ass for that if need be. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I just, you know, we're, we're in the, this is probably my, my least favorite time. Right after free agency and right before the draft, I just can't wait no more. Like, I'm just like. I'm sick of talking about who we're going to draft because JD always does something different than what we're thinking. And it's just like the, the, uh, the unknown just creeps in and kills me. You know, it's like, there's so many different ways to Bauer bros and all the shit. And it's like, well, let me say this though. I just, he, I just can't wait. Really, yeah. But does he really always do something that correct? Like Zach Wilson was obvious. We knew that was coming. Like the, the decision to take Beckton, like it was either like, uh, it, it, it was either Beckton or Werfs. Like, I don't think it was that surprising they went with Beckton in hindsight. Like, they they, they were going to go offensive line over receiver that year because Douglas was all about building the trenches and all that. And, you know, last, last year was only – was, like, the first, like, holy crap, true surprise with the McDonald pick. But, like, the year before that, like, I, I guess in hindsight we could say the sauce pick was a bit of a shocker. But, like, when you realize how much they loved him, I don't know if it was that big of a shocker. Garrett Wilson at 10 was logical. Um yeah, I mean, like, I, you're not totally off, but I think more times than not, we have a pretty good idea where he's leaning. This year, I think, is very unique because it's an all-in year. The GM has not won yet. He needs to win. And while they shirt up the O-line, there's an argument. Is, the argument is they still could do it again. They need another weapon. There's the Bauer boys out there. So, like, you're right from that standpoint that this year is more unpredictable than maybe other years in the past. For sure. And – when we drafted Sauce, I honestly thought we were going D end at that pick. So I was a little shocked. I didn't think we were going cornerback that high. And then with Garrett, I had an idea of wide receiver. I just didn't know who. Like, it was a crap shoot. We were talking Jamison Williams at 10 for a while. And there were so many names floated around at that point between, you know, Garrett and Olave. And it was just, you know, but, uh, yeah, I still, you know, we were just talking earlier. I, I don't. I don't, what quarterbacks were picked since Wilson? Because even in that draft, we couldn't have picked any of those quarterbacks, and we would have been happy with with JD. You know what I'm saying? If we would have picked, obviously Wilson hasn't performed better. You know, he's been the worst out of them in terms of performance. But if we would have picked Fields or we would have picked uh, Mac or any of those, we would have still been knocking him. And then. What quarterback has even been found since, like, Purdy and CJ? You know, and CJ kind of fell into the Texans' lap. Picking quarterback ain't easy, you know. So it sucks that we missed, and at least J.D. made up with it with Rodgers after the mess up with Wilson. The, the only gripe I'll always have with him is that I kind of felt like he believed in Wilson last year when he shouldn't have. And that, that ruined even a, a chance of uh, – a season without Rodgers being successful, you know what I mean? 
Well, that to me is the biggest knock. It's not it's not picking Zach Wilson. It's the stubbornness and not admitting the mistake of Zach Wilson. Like the Niners picked Trey Lance. Trey Lance, until proven otherwise, is actually a bigger bust than Zach Wilson. People don't want to talk about that, but he is. Like here, here I am going to defend Zach kind of like like Trey Lance got traded and he played like three or four games and the greatest offensive coach in the league couldn't wait to get rid of him. Like start Mr. Irrelevant, a seventh round pick. Like they admitted their mistake though. I think they deserve credit for that. The Jets told you Zach Wilson couldn't play and then insisted we need to shoehorn him on the roster to be Rodgers' backup, which made no sense. If you think about it, even if in an ideal world, Zach Wilson like learned from Aaron Rodgers. Well, Rodgers has already talked about playing two, three, four more years. Zach Wilson's contract would run out. They would need they weren't going to pick up his fifth year option to pay him twenty million as a backup. So like they tried to tell you that this timeline worked with Zach sitting behind Rodgers. The problem was Zach had already played two years. So this is not Jordan Love sitting before he ever played three years and then being the guy. Like the timeline never added up for Zach to be the long term successor. It was just like PR nonsense they put out there and we bought it because we're just like, well, I don't like this, but like it's Aaron Rodgers. Let's just like focus on that. But I mean, like that the timeline never made sense. And that's why I was so upset and ranted about just giving him the backup job without even having him really compete for it with Tim Boyle. That's a joke. No, the, the, the whole Boyle thing was, I feel like, because Rodgers went a bunch of years with Boyle as the backup. So that's, that's probably their thought process. And then even after that Patriots game, we were all kind of done with Zach right then and there. And then he goes and has that Chiefs game. And then there it is. That's what started everything. It was that damn Chiefs game. And then we won a couple. And he didn't, like, you know, play out of uh, – like, he didn't play, like, as he, as bad as the uh, Patriots game. But he didn't play as good as the Chiefs game. But we were winning games. So everyone kind of backed off him a little bit. And then you get to the, the, the bye week and the Giants win. The rest, we know what happened, man. It's just – and you know what, though? One thing I will say is Joe Douglas, he actually did believe in Zach. Like, he – it, as bad as of an, uh, a thing, I don't think he was like, like just like not getting somebody else because of of like spite. I think he really thought Zach could do it, and obviously he he was wrong on that. Man, we got to knock him on that. Look, he was wrong on that, but ultimately, like his pivot was Rogers. Rogers got hurt, so he gets this year to play it out. But would you agree if they somehow miss the playoffs, we don't get to? Fire Sal and keep JD like they should be attached. Like, they, like if this year is a disaster, eight and nine, whatever, seven and ten, Rodgers is banged up again. Like to me, it's not an excuse anymore. Like you've had your time. You're in your sixth year, fifth full off season with free agency and a draft. Like you should be a playoff team now. I watched Kenny Pickett and Joe Flacco uh, be in the playoffs last year. I guess it was Mason Rudolph. But you get the point. Like there's no reason why the Jets with this roster can't be uh, one of the seven teams in the postseason. Definitely. And all we can say now is JD has given us a, a good chance right now on paper to, to go into this draft with some freedom and, you know, unknown. And that's going to help us play the board better and maybe, you know, trade down or get our old lineman. If he's there, we're going to play the board. We're going to see who's there. If one of these wide receivers are there and the offensive line go, well, we could go that direction and then get a development guy. We could trade back and get a receiver and then target a, an offensive lineman in the second round. We're definitely going to get an old lineman. I'm hoping at 10, but I wouldn't be upset if, you know, if all goes and, you know, we're going to see who, who they believe in too. Because you always know, like, Douglas has his couple guys and, and, and you know how they like their work ethic and football first. And you got to be a good locker room guy. And you got to be good in front of uh, the, the cameras. So we, we got a lot to unfold. and. All I can say is we still got Aaron Rodgers and Joey Three Legs has been doing his thing. Now, Bonesy, is it true that you sold uh, Bronx Boy 90 here, a pair of Skechers? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not true because we don't sell Skechers, so I can't even <laughs> pretend to go with it. <laughs> well, you know what? I can't think of a better thing to play you out than this. Bonesy's the leader of the Joe Douglas backer support group. I won't use the term truther. We're, we're, we, we are retiring that term with the Wilson truthers. But we know Bonesy's a Joe Douglas guy. It's time to win now. 
Baron writes in. He's got a super chat for us. Thanks, Baron. Last time the Jets traded up to five, it was Mark Sanchez, right? I say trade up to five and get Marvin Harrison Jr. Look, I think that was the last time they traded up to five specifically. Yes. That draft was crazy, right? 2009, little Radio City. Jets are on the clock. Here comes Mark Sanchez. Hat on the head, on the phone with Tannenbaum going, whoa, I'm going to be a Jet. Love it. Love Mark. Mark's a bucket list guest on this show. Hopefully we get him. We got So far this offseason, we have gotten one bucket list guest on the channel. That was Rich Eisen. More to come. But Sanchez and Rex Ryan are two of the other bucket list guests I got on the list. But could you imagine the New York Jets trade up? And they're all in to get Marv. Oh, baby. Brian says, Jake, his take isn't jaw-dropping. Why are you baiting people? You mean to tell me that a legendary sports radio host saying that the GM of the Jets should be shot if they pass on Joe Alt is not a jaw-dropping, funny-ass take? They should be shot. I disagree. I don't think I'm baiting people. I think I'm doing people a service. I mean, this man said this with a straight face. Get the good fortune of Alt being there at 10. If they don't take him, they should be shot. If they don't take him, they should be shot. They should be shot. I think I'm doing everyone a service, but okay. Can't please everyone. Roger says, Jay, keep up the great work. Don't forget to smash the like button. Hey, if you're tuned in live right now, you got to hit that like button. We only got 142 likes. We got plenty of people tuned in right now. 400 plus. That should be 400 likes, no? Appreciate everyone for their support. M. Durrett says, Jake, there was a Gus Buster name drop on Picks 11 this morning. I will tell Steve Asman. You will have the Gus Buster media team pull the clip. We love when the, the media folks give Gus Buster a shout-out. Because my dad you know, me, is a guerrilla marketing guy. D-Rob says, Jake, any difference in Texas Chipotle from New York City Chipotle? New York City Chipotle is about a dollar... 50 more expensive. I've been told they're more stingy on the portion sizes. Full disclosure, I've only had New York City Chipotle since I've been back once so far. That will obviously change, but these last couple of days have been crazy. Big Game James is up next on the program today. Hello, Big Game. Shake, shake, shake. Welcome back to the east side, baby. How you settling in? Yes, sir. Yeah, so far, so good, man. I got a lot still to do, but, you know, I'm going to the Yankee game tomorrow, so all is right in the world. Awesome, man. Well, I'm happy that you're back northeast with us, baby. They need to get you on Good Morning Football because I haven't stopped. I've watched, I stopped watching after Kay Adams left, but we got to get you on Good Morning Football. And we got to get you up to the big leagues, man. But uh, shout out to you. <laughs> I haven't tuned in a while. I like the Joe Douglas, uh, Steve Austin. So shout out to, I guess, Gator made, the, made that clip. So I'm glad Gator listened to me when I was almost like, half off my ass from the, what was that, the Tyron Smith uh, signing. But, hey, I think, you know, again, we got to give J.D. a chance. Not a trooper, but, you know, I think I'm one that's on the field where if he, if this season becomes an unmitigated disaster, as you like to say, I think both of them has to go and we have to unfortunately start fresh. It's going to be a crap show, but it's probably what we're going to have to do, especially if we have a high draft rating next year. But on the optimism side, let's hope Roger stays healthy. Let's hope we get a good draft pick, and hopefully, you know, the season's up for 2024 because the AFC, again, East is up for grabs. We said that in 2020 after Brady left, but really, we have a quarterback. We are have up for grabs. We should be able to rock and roll. Oh, also, my stove is cooking. I got to cook something. But later, hey, Jake, appreciate you, buddy. I appreciate you, James. Let's hope JD's cooking up something, huh? Something big in the draft. All right, let JD cook. That's what they say. Super Chats will cut our line. Comments, questions, become an Asmaniac. Hit that join button. I mentioned Circa earlier, but I want to emphasize it again. Watch the NFL draft right here on this channel. We're going to be reacting to everything in real time as it happens. Live from the greatest place on earth, if you're a sports fan. Circa Resort and Casino. It is as good as it gets, people. Largest indoor and outdoor sports book. Prominent restaurants. Great location. Right in old Vegas. I mean, it's 
it's as good as it gets, man. It's going to be a blast. We had a blast the last time we were out there in November for the NFL draft. I was there staying for the week during Super Bowl week and had a great time. I can't get enough of Circa, so make sure you guys tune in to our draft stream. And, of course, it's never too early to book your stay at CircaLasVegas.com. More calls right now. BMAC up next. Hello, BMAC. What's going on, Jake? Uh, uh, um, I was on, um, um, you know, I watched uh, First Take. And um, no, no, not first take. Um, get up um, with uh, with Greeny and them, and then um, I we don't get this, you know, this narrative that the Jets are uh, injury prone. They need to stay healthy. Rogers forty come up to Achilles. They need to stay healthy. They need to stay healthy. If 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 they're healthy, like that's for every team. If they're healthy, like no one's saying that about the Bengals. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, Joe Barrow has been more injury prone than Rogers. In, in, in his career, nobody's saying that about the Buffalo Bills. They they were decimated, decimated with injuries last year on the defense side of the ball. No one said that about the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes has been banged up in the playoffs and missed some time uh, in 2019. Like 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 now, I get it. Rogers old old and he's 40, and I get it. It's a question mark, but you know, like like I said, man, what happened to him was a freak injury, and before. This year, the man was the Iron Man. Like, like, like. Yeah, but all right, I'm going to let you go because your internet was a little choppy there, but I got the gist of your point. You're right. Look, the Jets have more injury questions than other teams because of the age of their quarterback. But, I mean, like last year, Tua and Lamar Jackson were the two quarterbacks that everyone said, well, they're always hurt. Lamar had not been able to finish the previous two seasons for the Ravens. Right? He didn't play in their playoff game two years ago because he was hurt. Tua had been unable to stay healthy every year of his career, even going back to his last couple of years in college. And he played every game last year. And so did Lamar. So, yeah, the Jets have injury questions, but every team does. Maybe more so with the Jets and other teams because of Tyron Smith and Rodgers. But Rodgers had been an Iron Man before this injury. He had missed one game since 2017. And it was because he had COVID, that game he missed. So, I I don't know, man. I get it. People are going to say, well, you know, injury this, injury that. That's fair. Uh, Joe Burrow's had a lot of injury problems, too. And BMAC is right. No one does bring that up. That is fair. That is definitely fair. But look, at the, at the end of the day, the Jets, from most people, will not get the benefit of the doubt. I saw a great tweet. I forget who said it. I'd love to give the guy credit. If someone knows who said this, please let me know so we can shout him out because I thought this was hilarious. It was like, on one hand, the Jets have one of the most talented rosters in the NFL. On the other hand, they're still the Jets. And that's like the conundrum. It's why I say, if you take the word Jets off the helmet, and just look at the names and the skill. It is one of, to me, the five best rosters in the NFL. It's one of the five best, certainly, in the conference. I think the Jets are the best team in the AFC East. I think the Bills are not as good as they've been. They've lost too many guys. They have too much dead cap space now to fill all their needs. Miami's lost a lot of talent. And they also have not proven they're actually a good football team. They've proven they're able to beat the teams they're supposed to beat, which the Jets need to prove that as well. But the Jets can't prove that until we get to this year and Rodgers is healthy. Like, Miami beat one playoff team last year. The Jets beat three. Miami was 1-5 and five against teams with a winning record. The Jets have beaten the Bills with Zach Wilson the last two seasons. The Jets beat the Texans last year with C.J. Stroud. They beat the Eagles last year when they were undefeated. So these things matter, man. They matter. Super chat from the big fella. Peter Castro's hate of Salah is hilarious. He hates him, man. It's wild. But I can't take Peter's Salah hate serious because he says the Jets are going to go 14-3. and three. In spite of Salah. If they go 14-3, and three, Peter, 
Robert Sala is your NFL coach of the year, just so you know. Mike writes in with a super chat. JD cooking up some Chipotle. Look, as much as I love Chipotle, I'm hoping our draft is, you know, a, a lot closer to, you know, Peter Luger's or Gallagher's or Keen's than it is Chipotle, if you catch my drift, Mike, but I got you. Darren says, you got Rich Eisen, Jake. That had to be a bucket list. Love that guy. He certainly was, man. Rich was great. I think the I think the the great part of that interview was the backstory of how it happened. I simply approached Rich when I saw him walking with Daniel Jeremiah in the hallway at the convention center at the combine, introduced myself, quickly chatted with him, and we had a time the next day scheduled for him to come on the show. He only did my show. Didn't do any other interviews, including the New York Jets then tried to get him on their in-house media team with Eric Allen, and he said he didn't have time. He couldn't do it. He literally came to the media area just to do my show because he knew I was a big Jet fan, and we had the conversation the day prior. So Rich is awesome. Uh, Allen says, Jake, will you miss In-N-Out? I never had In-N-Out when I lived in Houston. There was only one of them that opened. Whataburger, I'll miss a little bit, but I'm okay without it, to be honest. I like Whataburger. My issue with it is they try to claim they're a fast food establishment. You're not when it takes 25 minutes every time you go between the drive through and then making the stuff. in and out has Whataburger beat from the fact that it's actually fast food. You're in and out Hence the name. Dan says, Jake, nice looking shirt you have. You have a link for where I could get one. I don't because this shirt I'm wearing is a Syasa Braves shirt. So unless you played for the Syasa Braves <laughs> back in the late 2000s, you will not have this shirt. Rat Diddy writes in, had some Chipotle after the big Yanks win yesterday. Hopefully the weather holds for opening day. I think it's supposed to hold, Rat Diddy. But man. Did you see a hell of a game yesterday, dude? I hope you saw us giving you uh, a shout out at the end of my stream yesterday, Rat Diddy. You probably didn't because it was at the very end and it was a long one. But I was watching the Yankee game on the TV to my right as I'm doing the show. And I was sweating it out with you. But thank you for doing your job and bringing the Yankees a series win yesterday. Oh, my God. Did I just see Julius Randles out for the season? Oh. God, no. No. No, that sucks. This was my fear, man. He had been practicing, but he hadn't been cleared for contact for a while. And at some point, with like two weeks to go in the regular season, he would have been cleared by now to start ramping up. That sucks. Now, I, I know Nick fans will try and spin it and say, oh, well, you know, Randall is bad in the postseason. His presence, though, you need that. That's tough. Because the Knicks still went around, yeah, maybe two. I, that's tough. Unless there's another injury to another superstar they're playing. It's going to be tough. I mean, this is the fear with a shoulder injury, man. And, like, Randall's an Iron Man, too. He never misses time. He played every game last year, last couple of years. That's brutal. He was having a great season, too. That sucks. They need to get OG back. Also, F the Miami Heat, man. It's always the Heat. It always comes back to the Heat. They injured Randall. They couldn't, Ian Begley saying, Randall will not return, wanted to play badly, couldn't get his dislocated shoulder staple. SNY sources say Randall was told by specialists that he wouldn't be able to get shoulder in place where he could play ESPN first. God. That's, a, I mean, it's brutal. There's no other way to put it. In New York sports, man. It's always the injuries, man. It's unreal. The jet season cratered because of injuries. The Knicks season has now cratered because of injuries. How many Yankee seasons have been cratered with injuries? I mean, even already this year, Cole's out two months. LeMayu's already hurt. 
I mean, they were the Knicks were 15 and two in January. Randall pushing hard to come back behind the scenes. Doctors say you need surgery, and that's it. God. If you're a Met fan, Sanga's out. Giants lost Daniel Jones and their whole O-line. Just New York sports, man. They need OG back. The, the Knicks could still get to, I think, a conference finals without Randall, as crazy as that sounds, because that's how deep their team is, but not without OG Ananobli, who will guard the opponent's best player, and the Knicks were, I think, 15-2 and two when OG and Brunson were on the floor together. Uh, this just – sorry, Nick fans. This sucks. No other way around it. Uh, no other way around it. Allen says Nick should have traded for Murray from us. Missed opportunity. Not at all. That would not have made them better. They don't need another guard who doesn't play defense. That sucks. Done for the year. That's it. They, 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 that's horrible. Chef Kevin says, as a Knicks fan, what are you going to do? It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, look, it was concerning the other night when you heard Josh Hart say after the game, we got to operate like these guys aren't coming back, and if they do, it's a bonus. People were like, well, what does that mean for OGs? Is his injury more serious than the Knicks are letting on? And I thought right away, no, it's not OGs. He's talking about Randall because he knows Randall's been trying to get back and he hasn't been cleared for contact yet, which tells you if he hasn't been cleared for contact is because the doctors are concerned his shoulder won't hold up without surgery, that it will keep separating. He won't be able to play through contact. If it was a pain tolerance thing, I think Randall would do it, but he's not cleared medically. As we know, Rand say whatever you want about Julius Randle. He's tough as nails. That sucks. I, I'm bummed out, man. <laughs> Tom, Knobel could save the Knicks season. Maybe only Knobel can. Can we give him a 10-day? Oh, that's tough. They, they, they need OG back. Otherwise, I think the Knicks ceiling is winning a round. I, I don't know how they could get through two rounds without Adenobly being back. That sucks. All right. Let's get to a couple more super chats here, and we'll try and power through. Coops writes in with a super chat, big-time super chat as well. Jake, this is where I have to push back. You mentioned this last year about the Bills and Dolphins. Bills have been in the playoffs the last few years. Dolphins really turned things around and made to the playoffs. Well, what are you pushing back on specifically? I think the Jets are the best roster in the AFC East. You're pushing back on that? What have the Bills and Dolphins done this offseason to get better? I could tell you what the Jets have done to get better. It starts with Rodgers' back, and his backup is now Tyrod Taylor, not Zach Wilson or Tim Boyle. The Jets had an absolute joke of an offensive line a year ago. Mekhi Becton is not signed by anyone. Why? Because he stinks. Dwayne Brown, probably out of the league by the end of this offseason. Why? Because he's old and he now stinks. Had a great career. Old, injured, now stinks. Lakin Tomlinson. Oh, the Jets can't cut Lakin. He plays. He's durable. Ugh. Not signed anywhere. Why? Because he stinks. All right? So... They've replaced three offensive linemen that are all not on teams right now because he stinks. they stink. They got Aaron Rodgers back, a backup for Aaron Rodgers. They upgraded on defensive edge going from Bryce Huff, who's very good, to Hassan Reddick. And I'm talking about just this year. Maybe Huff's better a couple of years than that when Reddick ages. But they're better now on defense than they were last year with Reddick. Reddick's better than Huff. He is. They also added Mike Williams, who's better than any other receiver the Jets had last year besides Garrett Wilson. They still have the 10th pick in the draft. Where's Miami picking? Where's Buffalo picking? So I'm not sure what you're pushing back on. 
The Bills made the playoffs the last four years. They deserve the benefit of the doubt. You want to main, make them the favorites still? That's fine. Vegas still has them as the favorites. But I say to you this. What have they done to get better? Have the Jets not beaten the Bills with Zach Wilson at quarterback the last two seasons? Do the Jets not play Buffalo well? Right? Josh Allen's numbers against the Jets are not good compared to other teams. Miami last year. Yeah, they made the playoffs the last two seasons. Good for them. They also now have a two-year sample size where they stink against teams above 500. Last year, they were 1-5. and five. Congrats. They beat the Jets with Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle last year. That first game, by the way, at MetLife on Black Friday was really competitive because of the Jets' defense. Remember Eccles had the pick six against Tua? That game should have been 10-6 at halftime. They missed the extra point, and then the fail Mary happened. Let's not act like the Bills and Dolphins are that much better than the Jets if they're better at all. The Jets have improved this offseason. What has Miami done? I mean, they lost Christian Wilkins and a bunch of other players as well. I mean, forget just Stephon Diggs, who Buffalo has lost, and now they have a $40 million dead cap charge. The Buffalo Bills this offseason lost Jordan Poyer, Tredavious White, Mitch Morse, Gabe Davis, and Leonard Floyd, who led them in sacks. So tell me what you're pushing back on, because... I stand by everything I said. I think the Jets are the best team in the AFC East. And if you tell me Aaron Rodgers plays 15 of 17 games next year, the New York Jets are winning the division. So that's how I look at it. Salem says Jets are the only team in the AFC East that's improved their roster significantly. Agreed. Look, if the Jets did nothing besides just bring Aaron Rodgers in, they're better. You don't think Rodgers wins the first Patriots game last year? You don't think Aaron Rodgers wins the Falcon game last year? One of the Charger or Raider game? Probably wins both, but I'll, I'll say the Raider game. That's three wins right there by just having Aaron Rodgers back. So, every year is different. Schedule is different. Injuries happen, etc. That's why I add the caveat. If you tell me Rodgers plays 15 of 17 games, like what Matt Stafford just did for the Rams, taking them to the playoffs, I think the Jets are the best team in the AFC East. Super chat from Dan, the Jet fan, who writes in, Jake, what's your opinion on the NFL Christmas games on Wednesday this year? Do you want the Jets to play in one? Team shouldn't play three games in nine days. So it wouldn't be three games in nine days, I don't think, right? Because the team that plays Saturday – the previous week would then play Wednesday and then they wouldn't play that following Sunday. My math could be wrong, Dan. I don't love it, to be honest with you, though. I mean, I if Christmas fell on a Sunday or a Monday or a Saturday, fine. Wednesday just feels greedy. Let the NBA have Christmas. I'll probably be at the Garden this or next year for Knicks, whoever they play. I don't like it, though. I'm so bummed about this Randall injury, man. I'm holding it together, but geez. Allen says, no excuses for the Jets not to win the AFC East and win a home playoff game. Anything less than a playoff win, you clean house. Look, if they don't win the division, but they win at least a playoff game, I don't think you clean house. But the goal in the regular season is win the damn division. It's time, people. It's freaking time. Period. Franco says, I think the Bills are still relevant if they move up and draft Brian Thomas Jr. I don't think they can move up to top five to get top three receivers. The Bills are still relevant even if they don't get Brian Thomas Jr. As long as you have Josh Allen, they have a shot. Now, Allen's not Mahomes, but Patrick Mahomes just won back-to-back Super Bowls without Tyreek Hill. So, the bill the Bills are still to me, the Jets' biggest threat because of their quarterback. But I'm telling you right now, I think Aaron Rodgers with these weapons is comparable to what Josh Allen has right now. I think the Jets have a better defense than Buffalo. I think they got a better special teams than Buffalo. I got to be honest. You can say McDermott's better than Salah. That's fine. I'd like to see 
I'd like to see what Robert Sala can now do that he has as quarterback. You want to give Bills the coaching advantage? That's fine. I, I, I think the talent, though, is clearly the Jets. And you hope Sala can get better as a coach, and I think he will look better as a coach. Why? Because he's going to have an outstanding team around him. Coops writes in, I agree about the improvements, but I don't agree with the Bills and Dolphins on the decline. Our division is very competitive besides the Pats. I agree we have the best team. Well, you can't say they got worse or they got better. The Jets have gotten better. Have the Bills or Dolphins gotten better? No, that's my point to you. I'm not saying they're on the decline from the standpoint they're not still good teams. They are, especially Buffalo, because Buffalo has Josh Allen. It's a quarterback sport. But you were pushing back on something that I don't think there needs to be any pushback, Coops. I think the Jets have been, are, are the best team in the division. You agree they have the best team, so they should win the division. Angela says, Jake, when are you going to be on ESPN 98.7? I don't have an exact shift scheduled at this point, but soon. Very soon. Especially with summer around the corner. I'll be on a lot this summer, hopefully. And I'll let you I, and I'll let you guys know on Discord if you're in there first before anyone when I'm on ESPN, Mad Dog Sports Radio, or doing a national show for ESPN Radio. But I I, I I'm I'm just crushed by this Randall news, man. Oh, brutal, absolutely brutal. I need something that will cheer me up. If the Jets get the good fortune of all being there at 10. If they don't take them, they should be shot. If they don't take them, they should be shot. They should be shot. You heard the man. If the Jets get the good fortune of all being there at 10, if they don't take them, they should be shot. Well said by the sports pope. Or is it? They should be shot. On that note, that's going to do it for today's show. We'll be back at 3 p.m. with the legendary Andrew Fialco breaking down some mid-round quarterbacks. Once again, I appreciate everyone for their support. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. Aaron isn't as committed as a lot of the young guys. He's not going to sit and watch game film all weekend. And I think he's aging faster than other guys. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high.